What's up, guys? This is Kaz with Elevate Your Craft, and welcome to episode number 26 of the podcast. I'm here with Deb Anderson, owner of Body Know Incorporated, a business based out of Burlington, Ontario, that provides body composition analysis using the Bod Pod for anyone from athletes to those looking to establish a benchmark for themselves so they can take their health and fitness, fitness to the next level. But before I get to start, Deb, thank you very much for being here. I yeah. really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, I thought I'd take the first part of the show to kind of learn a bit about you and, and body know and then we'll get into detail on the bod pod so if we can just start off where did body know begin and what inspired you to take action toward it body know began about seven years ago but unbeknownst to me at the time i went down the road of getting myself back into shape so it was the beginning of me um, losing that unwanted 35 pounds but then watching a woman in the gym about my age lifting weights and mm -hmm. <clears throat> approaching the trainer and saying, can I try that? And we started. I loved it. Started to feel change. And then my trainer suggested that I go to have my body composition done to see where I was mm -hmm. at and where I could go. Um, thus, I met the Bod Pod. Um, and I was going to Mac University to use their Bod Pod. Um, and then I realized, as it was a little more difficult to get my appointments in to fit my schedule... Um, and it just wasn't working as well. I decided that I needed to bring one into the public realm and make it very accessible for people to, to, to have access to this sort of information, whether they be, mm -hmm. as you said earlier, an athlete or not, but we should all establish our benchmark and do it at least once a year. Um, because I watched my body composition go from an unhealthy level to a very healthy level now. Well, it's amazing what seeing someone, you mentioned that woman lifting the weights can do. Um, to like, just by seeing it, you basically believe that it can be done. You think, hey, I want to do that as well. And you mentioned um, previously when we spoke that you, you did work with a trainer and that it had a great effect on your life. Uh, could you kind of describe what that effect was? I do work with a trainer. Um, initially, I worked with a woman, a young woman who unfortunately was, was killed in a, in a bike accident as she was training for a triathlon. But through her <clears throat> passion for fitness and belief in me, I, I lost 35 pounds wow. by clean eating, um, her suggestion, my research. And then I um, obviously had to have another trainer, which the owner of the gym, um, Andrew English, um, mm -hmm. took me under his wing. And that's who I approached and said, I'd really like to try that. And it was the traditional um, bench press um, uh, chin ups, that yeah, sort squats, of regimen, that right? Kind of exactly. Thing, yeah. And we yeah. did go down that road, and it turned out that I have um, a, a talent for it. I don't know how to put it, but um, the confidence, um, the realization that I'm never really too old to try anything new. I didn't start lifting till I was in my fifties. Mm -hmm. um, I've had a lot of injuries, but I've gotten better um, and I've gotten stronger. I mean, I'm 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 deadlifting 240 pounds, and my goal is not 240 pounds. It's bigger than that, and I'll yeah, get there. Yeah. So, because of that, in the gym, there's many things out there that I feel I can do, and I'm not scared to do, mm -hmm. like go out and buy a bod pod and try to start a business with it. It's an interesting dynamic I've found. I don't know if you've seen this in fitness, um, especially with women. I've kind of seen it indirectly, just with people I trained with in martial arts or or fitness. But there's almost a, a fear of lifting weights uh, because their their body will become more masculine or, you know, they'll have these big muscles, but they don't necessarily want to have the big muscles. They want to keep that feminine. And this is something I asked a previous uh, guest, Iris. She's a yoga instructor. because It's an interesting dynamic, I think, anyway, that that fear is there. Is that something you've come across at all? All the time. You hear people say, no, I'm not going to do that. I don't want to bulk up. I have the body type that does bulk up a little mm -hmm. bit. I'm really okay with that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I cannot tell you how many people approach me and say, you're so fit looking, you're so strong looking, and people appreciate it. But there are ways of using weights that you become leaner and, mm -hmm. and um, 
you can elongate yourself almost looking because if you're if you're strong, it doesn't mean that you have to look like a guy or or yeah, act yeah, like a male big, either. Bulky muscles, right. Yeah. And and even though I'm strong looking, I don't think I have big, huge, bulky muscles. But there is different ways of resistant training to get different mm-hmm. outcomes. So it is just another one of those myths. It goes along with the myth of if I go and work out for an hour, I can go home and eat a thousand calories and yeah. not gain a, a pound. <laughs> I've earned <laughs> this food. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and and it, and again, uh, the other myth is it's not eighty percent the exercise and twenty percent the diet. It's twenty yeah, percent the exercise opposite. and eighty yeah. percent nutrition that gets you to your goal. There's that saying that um, people often underestimate what they're eating and then overestimate what they're doing. A hundred percent. So it kind of comes back to, to bite the, uh, I guess the person that doesn't really know or has lived it even. Um, and we've talked about body composition uh, a bit and um, the technology has really come out. I can see that you're wearing uh, a, a bracelet of some sort, whether it's fitness related or not, yep. but you see them everywhere now, whether it's the Microsoft band or the Fitbits. Um, you working with cutting edge technology being the bod pod. What do you think of these types of devices that are out there? And I, I was an early adopter of this type of adv- uh, device. I had the Fitbit. Um, I had the I Nike used, Fuel Band. It, yes, that's true. I did as well. That was my first yeah. one. Um, I didn't really use it for too long. Uh, I think the thing that kind of threw me off was I never really knew how accurate it was. True. Um, I always questioned it. Uh, and at the very core, I don't really like wearing anything on my wrists anyway. But I think the bigger issue was accuracy. Um, but working with cutting edge technology, what do you think of these devices? Do you think they are beneficial ultimately? Or should they strive to use something like the Bod Pod? That's kind of the peak of, of that type of technology. Well, I don't think the two, I don't think there's a point that the two shall meet ever. Mm-hmm. But just in addressing your first part of the question is I think the technology of being able to wear on your wrist, um, the the bottom line of it, and I say it to people is you can't, it's, it's the same as, as the food trackers. I, those are really inaccurate and those scare me a bit because, um, um, fit pal or, or any of them that you can put your food in and it tells you, Oh, you've consumed this amount of calories or these are your macros. Um, they can be inaccurate and then you're, 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 falsely putting food into you at least with the armbands and they're getting more sophisticated as you go um but with the activity trackers at least it can tell you i moved more Mm -hmm. um i'm not moving as much as i should or hey i didn't realize i've been sitting and being inactive that long because we really should be up and moving probably every 20 minutes um and that i think is the power of what these things do um the heart rate portion of them now fitbit's getting really the blaze is getting information that people with especially older Mm -hmm. um with heart rate issues at at least again it'll keep you in the right zone or it'll push you up to the right zone so yeah, yeah they all have a place the bod pod it is technology that's been around since uh mid 90s and it's uh, it was born in Italy. Yeah, um, yeah. The subject matter has been under research since 1958. There's reams of research on it, scientific papers, um, and it is the it is the is it's the base science of density, right? Um, the more dense you are, the mm-hmm. higher the lean. Um, the bod pod has just come up with the most accurate and trackable. Um, uh, technology and method mm-hmm. um, next to and and the closest the prob- still the best that they say is the dunk tank yeah where you're submerged right? but that yeah. is so difficult so cumbersome and, and mm-hmm. it's it's fading away because of it's much easier um, for you to get into a bod pod and displace yeah. air rather than probably much less expensive to in the bod pod but then again I don't uh, yeah don't I don't know, know because I, yeah I don't know I just yeah. I haven't I haven't seen a dunk tank mm-hmm and getting back to the, the wearables, I think it's a lot of psychological effect as well. Even just like you said, someone who isn't moving, if it can help them to move and kind of give them some sort of guidance or something to measure, I think it's it's definitely a, a good thing. Absolutely, because it, you can still look at a number and if it was less than it was yesterday yeah, and it wasn't exactly. where it should be, then at least it works on get moving. I mean, it's like this Pokemon Go it's getting oh, yeah. people up yeah. and moving, right? I, exactly, not that I agree yeah. with it and I don't condone it, but I'm just saying whatever gets you moving. Yeah, hopefully it doesn't get them moving into traffic or something like yeah. that. It's That's a whole other... But the wearable, <laughs> I think it has a place. People just cannot... Nobody should rely on anything um, blindly. It's a Blind faith like that is... is yeah, mm-hmm. you know, it's not there yet. 
do you think um, the average person relies or focuses too much on their weight and not their body composition? I mean, this is perfect because I'm sure you, you see people's body compositions all the time. But I feel like there's a, a real focus on, I just want to lose weight. People don't understand body composition. Mm-hmm. As a general rule, there's huge denial out there. Um, because people will see themselves lose 10 pounds on the scale in a diet that's worked um, in in two weeks, um, where if they were to really truly understand the composition of their body being 73.2% body fluid, and Mm -hmm. and that fluctuates. If they understood carbohydrates and glycogen and what's stored with that and where it comes from, then they would want to understand and know their body composition because then they would know how to feed themselves. They would know how to exercise themselves. Um, I mean, you can go one step further if they knew their own genetics. That plays into it as well. Yeah, yeah. But the more precise and concise and correct information that we have, the better we can sculpt our... um, our lifestyle yeah. and our nutrition. To, well, that, to that's suit what us was work. huge for me was again that accuracy issue. I never really felt I found anything that was very accurate. But again, when I just stumbled upon the Bod Pod um, in your business, I thought, oh, here we go. I, this is kind of the gold standard, yeah. uh, or one of them, um, for accuracy in body composition. And that was kind of a I don't know about a weakness, but a hole in what I was doing. I never really it was knew an unknown. where, yes, exactly. I never really knew where I sat. And especially with feeding myself and knowing what to feed myself as far as macros and that kind of thing, that was huge. Um, so I think it is, like you said, important to know that kind of thing. Well, and you're an athlete, um, but the everyday person, especially women, and as well, and I, no, both, both, both sexes, as we age, we lose muscle cells. So our scale may tell us that we're staying the same, but we're not. We're losing our lean. And as we lose our lean, down goes our metabolism. As we lose our lean, down goes our strength. As we lose our lean, um, we're not able to to be self-dependent, maybe as mm-hmm. long as we want to, um, or to be uh, as balanced and as strong as we want to as we age. And that, at the end of the day, really is important. I want to be able to get out of my bath by myself when I'm 90. And knowing where I'm at with my lean and my body fat, that's really important. Because I believe that um, muscle weighs more than fat. Correct. And that would be something that might not be understood from the get-go. And it's not necessarily just about, hey, I want to lose... I mean, you do want to lose fat. Most of the time, I'm sure people do. But if they were to gain that lean mass... The number might not change too much on the scale, but their body composition has changed. And I think that's something too important for, you know, the average person to realize is that number means so much less than you might put on it. Well, and we do need body fat. We need body Mm -hmm. fat to insulate. We need body fat to protect. We need body fat to help our body work. But when we've got more body fat than our body needs, bored fat gets in trouble and it gets us in trouble. And if we don't understand the numbers that come up because we know we're eating the right thing, we know that we're doing the right thing in our movement, Mm -hmm. in our exercise, whether you be in a gym or you be outside or whatever, then sometimes it's an indicator that something isn't working right and we need to step into our doctor's office. Mm -hmm. And I have personally seen three instances that have had happy, happy, um, not endings, but but a couple of them were um, interventions almost in, yeah, in a potential, yeah. a big potential health issue, and one ended up in a preventative surgery, just because we kept seeing numbers that didn't make sense, and the adjustments were made in the lifestyle, but it did need a medical, it did need medical attention, and yeah. this was their medical alert. So no, I'm not saying it's going to save your life, but yeah, we do need clarity, to understand and you know, know our body power. composition. Yeah, yeah. And to be able to check back to it. So even if you do it once a year, once every two years, mm-hmm. if it's changing and you don't know why, um, then you have to make those lifestyle changes to accommodate it because... Mm-hmm. And by it, you mean your body composition. Numbers. Your body composition. Yes. Your, to yeah. me, the focus is the lean number. Mm-hmm. We want that lean number to stay at a certain point so that it... It drives. It's 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 telling us our bone density. I mean that that's in there. It's telling us, it, it's telling us that that yes, your muscle is staying where it should, or mm-hmm. or you're you're staying in a healthy range. That is your metabolism. That is your engine. Yeah, yeah. And before actually, this would be a good segue into actually getting into the bod pod. But um, 
the difference between men and women as far as body fat requirements uh, is something I definitely uh, want to get into c- to kind of set the stage. What are those differences? Do you know why that difference is there as far as body fat levels between men and women? Oh, well, just because of the reproductive yeah, mainly yeah. is why women will always have higher body fat mm-hmm. than men. Um, it's, it's genetics. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it, but it's, 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 uh, the way we are yeah, for the purpose kind of, of the who way. we are and what are, what yeah. each sex is to do. Yeah. But, uh, a woman is for a healthy average woman, um, that eats well, it does a, you know, goes for a few walks a week and stays active mm-hmm. and is not bullishly going after her. That's 25 to 30 percent. Um, and again, I use that with very broad strokes. Of course. Yeah. Um, and most men are, I would say, from what I see, and I'm talking anywhere in between 25 to 50 type thing, are sitting between 18 to 25. Mm-hmm. Um then when you get into the athletes, it, it, the numbers change up yes, a bit. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, but it's it's w- without going into um, uh, uh, now you've got me uh, the without yeah, going into, into too, yeah, into the, the medical yeah. side of it. I mean, it's just it's yeah, yeah. because the, of what women's bod, bodies are supposed to do. The, what I wanted to emphasize is there there is a difference in those figures. So oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, the lowest a man can be without. Uh, if I have a male underneath 7.5 percent, he sh- there, then that's that's under 7.5 is risky. A woman, it's 15 percent under. So that's seven under 7.5 would be someone maybe training, or they're in a show like an Olympic oh, sure, bodybuilder, if they're, and they're only going to be there for a day, really or temporarily. Two. Yeah, yeah probably. Yeah, usually, yeah. that's a fitness model. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe a hockey player coming off the ice. Yeah, um, yeah. that's a really elite athlete, or a fitness uh, yeah, a model yeah. of some sort. Somebody mm-hmm. toying with areas that they shouldn't be. Um, same with a woman. You really don't. I mean, her she'll affect the way her bodily her body functions mm-hmm. um, if she's much below fifteen percent. I have a couple of examples, but they're very highly competitive, like worlds yeah. um, um, lifters. Um, and again, back to a few fitness models. Yeah. Yeah. So what is this machine that's performing these analyses of the bod pod? What is it from kind of the, the guts, like as a machine, what, what is it doing? Okay. The bot, well, the whole process is, is we're going to find out very precisely what your, your full body mass is. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to sit in this egg shaped machine, which has the test chamber. That's where you're sitting. This Mm -hmm. thing is molded out of fiberglass. And behind the sitting area, um, if anybody's old enough, if they think about Mork and Mindy, it's the Morkmobile. It has a big (laughs) window in it so that you're not going to get claustrophobic. Um, But behind that actual area where your body is sitting is a bladder. And it has air. And it pumps air into the chamber. Mm -hmm. What you're doing, what it's doing, is your body is displacing air. The machine is defining how much air is being displaced. What that will tell us is the volume of what your body t- what your body is, then we plug in some information into the software, which will put you into the right test group. So your age, we ask for your height because we want to know what your skin coverage is because there's a thermal number that has to come into this because heat oh. will play into yeah, the yeah. into the uh, into the uh, formula, mm-hmm. um, and. Uh, so your gender, your sex, your, um, sorry, I just said gender and sex, your sex, <laughs> your age, your skin coverage, uh, and then the information that the machine is actually coming up with comes up with your density. The higher the density, the higher the lean. The lean body mass. Yeah. So it is, it is the machine itself is working out what your body volume is. So it's quite sophisticated. I think so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wow. And it's, I guess, because one of the things you told me, and I even read on your website, is used by elite athletes in, in the military. And I mean, so it's got to be the gold standard of, of body composition. The U.S. Analysis. military will not let you in unless you pass a bod pod test. They want to know where you're at. Um, even if you go away and come back on leave, you'll be put through the bod pod to see what you've done to your body because they'll be able to tell. Mm-hmm. Um you can uh, the the on the fun side the uh, the biggest losers any of those shows oh, use yeah. the bod okay. pod. Yeah. Um, 
elite, elite athletes brings a picture to mind, but the elite athletes, um, the sumo wrestlers association in Japan, oh, yeah. that is what they use. A different use. type of elite athlete. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Um, the, uh, NFL combines in the States. Um, all of their athletes go through it. Mm-hmm. They have a stage when when the athletes are coming through, and there's there's 15, 20 bod pods. It's quite a sight. Yeah. And they're put through the bod pods. Cleveland Clinic, Mayo Clinic, um, MedCan, they use the bod pod. They use it more for a um, to make sure you're in a healthy zone, a healthy range. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Whereas the way I'll use it, uh, and then there's two other gyms um, in in uh, Toronto that use it, we'll get very concise with it and and ask you to follow protocol right to the T so that we can get as close to um, uh, the best point that we can. There is a 1% to 2% variable. Mm -hmm. I've rarely seen mine out more than 1%, but I'm a single operated machine. So there's there's the weakest point of the machine is the hinges. And if somebody's yanking away at it or... or oh, I see. There's some loosening. It just loosening. affects the... Because it's sealed. Right. I, I imagine. It's I a can, sealed yeah. unit once you're in by magnets. But it is um, quality checked every day so that we... If, if there's something not right, we can tell that each and every day. So you have faith that the machine is working all the time. Mm-hmm. And there are a lot of... I don't know, a handful, I guess, would be a more accurate description of the types of technologies that claim to accurately measure your uh, body fat percentage and i have been through a a few of them uh myself but how would the bod pod compare to something like and it's almost obvious in asking but something like the skin fold the caliper or electric impedance or or impedance um things like that would you say it's on another level entirely or okay well yes because what it's doing is it's giving you a big body fat, and mm-hmm. I'm sorry to, to, to focus in on the body fat, but that's a number that's, that's on its own. And it's looking for body fat overall. What the skin caliper does is it's, 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 it's measuring the, the surface mm-hmm. body fat, and then there's a formula that kicks in by the person who's doing your scalpers, yeah, caliper yeah, testing. Yeah. Um, and it also depends on the operator. You've got to make sure that that person is of the best quality and the best knowledge and that the calipers themselves are of the best quality. And you've got to make sure that you do the same spot each and every time. So, yeah, now all of a sudden your variable has gone, is it still at 1% to 2%? No, you're yeah, probably closer yeah. to 5 to 8% inaccuracy. Well, which um, is substantial. With the uh, impedance, Again, it's it's measuring, it's sending a small electrical current through, and it's working on that. Um, it's working with the resistance of the liquid in your body. Um, but it has no idea okay. who you are, what group you belong in. It's, it's looking strictly at one factor. Mm-hmm. So, again, the variable. But both of those will still give you an idea. Yeah. And having... Uh, at least a closer guess than not knowing at all, it's all better than what the scale does. Yeah, I guess if you establish certain conditions with those, I mean, I'm going to wake up. As soon as I wake up, I'm not going to eat, and I'll measure it then, um, and then I get a number. As long as I replicate those conditions every single time and I can see it going down or up, perhaps it would work. It might not be as accurate as, say, the bod pod, but it's still giving you an indication of... You know what? It's better than nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's something to yep. to measure, I but guess. But I guess I'm of the belief if if uh, um, if you have access, and that's what I try to do with, with my bod pod, mm-hmm. with body now. If you have access, why wouldn't you? Yeah, of course. Why wouldn't you do the best that you can? But I, again, at the same time, maybe you only want to do the bod pod once a year, or once every two years, and then use the other things in between. Yeah. Because if yeah. you start to see a trend in the wrong direction then you know you got to change something up. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, as far as the cost, you know, one of those machines, those handheld uh, impedance machines, they're still 30 to $40. Mm-hmm. Whereas you can get a, a measurement, I think, for a body, no, 60 Well, 60 is for a single, for a and single. that includes yeah. HST. So, yeah, so um, uh, if you go for the package of four, which I let people share that too. So if you mm-hmm. get four people together, it's $45, and that's including HST. Yeah, I mean... 
to I me anyway, really, that's well worth it. Well, and I work really hard at trying to keep that cost to the point where I, I rarely get anybody saying to me it's too expensive. Mm-hmm. I don't think I've had anybody say that to me. Yeah, well, to be honest, I was surprised. I thought it would be more. Uh, but again, that's just... No, I just... Well, it's an investment, yeah. um, and it, it's a passion of mine. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. It was a pleasant surprise, just to say Good. that. Oh, most definitely. Well, I want oh, it to be wow. affordable. Yes, it, that, it's exactly. For someone, I know for myself, who I was kind of... It's not so much about... In a way, I guess it is about setting a benchmark, but it was more about just knowing where I was. Like, I, I know I'm in a good place. I know I'm healthy, fit, that kind of thing. But it's just figuring out where I was and to kind of say, okay, here I am. Now I can work from this. And then say six months down the line, go again. And well, and you are, um, there are lots of you out there mm-hmm. just more curious than anything. But there's also lots of people that um, are on a journey um, and they don't, they don't understand what's going on. Why can't I lose weight or why yeah. can't I get fit? And so there's two, there's two ways to, to look at that. They come into the bod pod, we look at their numbers and their numbers are good. Then that person walks out going, yeehaw, it's, mm-hmm. it's, I'm, I am doing the right things and I'm, my body fat is in a good place and my, my, my lean number is in a good place and they, they feel, um, even more motivated. Um, then there's the other people that come in and and they see where their lean number is and they see where their body fat number is. And then we start to chat about diet. And I've got a lot of people that will send me their, their food intake for a week and I can literally go, okay, look at, look at what you're eating now. Mm -hmm. Um, look at where your numbers are and we can adjust it accordingly there. Uh, cause again, it's 80% nutrition. Of course. So knowing those numbers can literally change your life and change your lifestyle. And it's not a diet. It's eating the way your body wants to be fed Mm -hmm. or needs to be fed. Um, so yeah, it it gives you a benchmark so that you know where to work from. It gives you a benchmark as an acclimation that you're, you're doing the right things. And for you, you're going to be able to step into that 10 years from now and go, yeah, I haven't changed my numbers or, I'm, I'm, it's just a good yeah, check-in. still within a certain range. Or, or it gives you, you go, oh, geez, you know what? In my yeah. new job or my new, I'm getting a little lazy here. I yeah. got to pick it up because aging kicks in and those muscle cells are not so easy to keep mm-hmm. where they need to be. What context would you say is most popular for you and, and your clients? Is it that athlete um, looking to just figure out where he or she is? Or is it more kind of the average person just looking to find a starting point? Ah, you know what? It's I. It's because I keep getting people that I I need help with my marketing, and the question is, who's your niche client? Who's your niche mm, market? Okay, yeah, yeah. You know what? It's right across the board. I've got competitive CrossFit people to competitive Olympic lifters, power lifters that are just as many as the guy who's, or the 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 couple that are in their fifties. Their kids are almost through university. They they've looked down at themselves and gone, ooh, my tummy's a little bit bigger than I want it to be, or the woman's a little feeling just not comfortable with herself. And now they can take some of that money and invest it back in themselves. And yeah, they've heard yeah. about the bod pod, and why not know where I am at before I make all these changes willy nilly? Yeah, so. Yeah. It's honestly, and I'm not trying to avoid it, it's it's right across well, it's the tough. board. I mean, it's something that relates to everyone, literally everyone. 100%. So Everybody should you, be in it. You're not trying to choose um, a group of people nope. over another. It's just it relates to every. It can benefit everyone. Absolutely. So, I guess, yeah. We should all know. Yeah. And yeah. I, it's there's so many, I'd say the biggest group, and I'm sorry, everybody, but the biggest group of, of deniers are women between the ages of 25 to 40. Hmm. They prefer to look at the scale and 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 go by if it's going up or down. Or they, yeah. It's, so it's, den- by deniers, you mean they just don't want to acknowledge they don't want to know their the numbers. composition is just kind of the scale? They and, don't want to know the numbers. Oh. Because if I really dig with these people, because there's I know a ton that have not been in, and they'll say... No, I'm, I'm, uh, I don't, I'm not ready to know, or I, you know, the biggest line that everybody says back to me is, I know I'm fat, you know, and I, men and women both say yeah, that, but yeah. I know I'm fat. I don't need, to, I don't need you to confirm that for me. I know I'm fat. But again, my it's answer to them is thing. you still don't know how to address it unless you understand. Yeah. But yeah, it's a mindset. 
Well, I guess men have something similar with a doctor. You know, they yeah. tend to avoid going <laughs> to yeah. the doctor. Yeah, true. <laughs> So what, what's involved in getting measured? So if you had a client um, inquire for the first time, they have no idea what to do. Uh, kind of take me through what's involved as, as far as, you know, when to go, when's ideal, in what state should you be in as far as eating and okay. hydration. I get lots of people that call me and say, can I come in now <laughs> at 2 o'clock in yeah. the afternoon? So I will say to them, first of all, I need you to be as empty. I need to be just you. So... Um, the best time is after you've had a fast. Well, sleeping time is a fast. Mm-hmm. So first thing in the morning works well. Um, you do not eat, you do not drink, and I, I mean not even a sip of water. You do not um, exercise. If it is in the middle of the day, because not everybody can get the kids out the door and get in here before work, so three hours. Um, do not eat, do not drink, do not exercise. And if you cannot not exercise at all that day before you come in, that's best. So, um, I, again, though, I, I like to go back to the morning because that is very easy to replicate yeah, for your yeah. subsequent measurements. Um, if you've had a big diet change, I have had people come into the bod pod beginning of three months. Um, they've done a lot of entertaining with clients they've um, overindulged, it's coming up to Christmas, whatever it may be. Yeah. They've gone crazy in the gym, meaning they've, they've increased it from four days a week to six days a week, thinking that that'll balance it off. Mm-hmm. And I'm talking, they're coming into the gym for an hour a shot. Yet they get back into the bod pod three months later, and darn it if their lean is not down and their body fat's up. But when I really dig down, well, yeah, I knew I was, I, I really was bad for three months, but for the past two weeks, I cut carbs. So I really thought that would take care of yeah. it. Cutting carbs is why their lean came down, because their carbs carries water with the glycogen. Yep. Um, and once that drops, that number comes off your lean. And body fat, well, it was building for the whole three months because of the... Just um, the overindulgence or whatever right, it whatever was. it may yeah, be. Yeah. So um, why I told that little story, though, is... Don't come in and have your bod pod done um, if you've just gone through a big carb cut or mm-hmm. uh, unless you understand exactly what you're doing and you want to see how your body is reacting, reacting to that. Yeah, yeah. But so your first one, um, go back to the, you know, you're, yeah, you're on yeah. your regular diet. Um, come in uh, when you haven't eaten for at least three hours. First thing mm-hmm. in the morning is best and not even water. That was interesting. I know when you told me for the first time, not even water, uh, but when you mentioned the impedance, you know, those handheld and how hydration can affect it, I can, I guess I can understand why it's, it just affects the actual reading. Right. Because it's, the, it's looking for the resistance. It's looking for the flow of electricity. Getting into a, a fitness specific scenario, how can this service, the bod pod benefit trainers? Ah, and there's another one. Some trainers don't want them to be going into any sort of um, measurement because um, <laughs> you know it makes the it makes the client accountable but it also makes oh, of course I was going to say the, the trainer, trainer accountable, accountable yeah, right because if that trainer is is um, not tailoring it to the person mm-hmm. um, then they're not doing their job. Um, you're not wasting your money because the odds are if you didn't have a trainer, you wouldn't be in the gym. If you weren't in the gym, you wouldn't be moving. But if that trainer's not focusing on... A a lot of cardio for me, for instance, isn't going to do it for me. Mm -hmm. Um, My resistance training is what changed my body composition. Not that I don't need some kind of cardio, but I was running. I was doing... I was doing all cardio, and my body fat was going nowhere. Uh, As soon as I got into strength training... Um, it, it changed it up for me. Um, yeah, yeah. But unless a trainer truly understands your body composition through some sort of, of measure, how can they really understand what your body's doing? Yeah, and, and tailor the routine or their program to right. the specific Well, and, and let's start with the program and see where we're going, and and let's check in and make sure this is the right way. Yeah, it could be used as checkpoints and Absolutely. progress updates and Absolutely. that kind of thing. What, if any, limitations uh, exist with the bod pod or any other body fat uh, that would be on a similar level as the bod pod? Are, what, if any, limitations exist with them? Well, I think if somebody's got some sort of, uh, and I haven't run into anything yet, mm-hmm. I mean, because the bod pod will measure uh, 
it'll you know it'll measure you if you're you're handicapped and you you can't physically use your body to to have a measurement yes. done. Yeah. Um, but I I guess there are some medical situations that you wouldn't. I, I yeah. don't know. You've stumped me. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a good thing. Um, I mean, it must mean that the, the technology is actually good. And, uh, well, it is because it's, it's non-invasive. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's nothing that you have to do except sit there relaxed. Um, and I remember you mentioned it, it's, it can work for large people as well or people that are very... Up to 450 pounds. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. So I guess the only other one would be the dunk tank where it's, it can accommodate really any size well no person. again because I, I don't think the container for the dunk tank is 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 just that, this incredible yeah, size yeah, yeah the biggest problem with the dunk tank and the bod pod does have a feature that you can have where you expel your air into a measuring um uh, a measuring um, piece of equipment which will measure what your thoracic gases are because that's part of the measurement of the lean. But through all the years of study and research, um, for every group, um, there is predicted um, thoracic gases, mm-hmm. which is mainly what we use because that that measurement of expelling the air can be really cumbersome, really difficult, and unless you do it precisely, it can be um, inaccurate. Yeah. Um, you have to expel your air to use the dunk tank to be able to get down. Oh, I see. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, true. Okay. that's an awkward and sometimes. Um, an issue for some people. Yeah, I bet. Be Plus, very... I don't know about you, but I don't particularly want to be dunked underwater. Submerged, yeah, mm-hmm. not ideal. So, <laughs> well, you know what? Even getting in, I remember getting into the bod pod too, and it was it went away very quickly, but the feeling of being put into the, the actual pod itself was for a second quite intimidating, but uh, slightly claustrophobic myself, but again, it, it went away very well, quickly. <laughs> I, I, I have to ask, and I keep meaning to, because mm-hmm. I, I speak, Cosmed owns the distribution rights for North America, yeah. and they are all um, they are all master's degree or more in, in the... the, the in this industry. And so their knowledge is, is above and beyond. And I, I've meant to ask, did the, cause that window is quite large in yeah, God pod. Yeah. It's, it's probably, well, you can see the whole person except from the knees down. And, um, was there ever a machine that existed without that window that big? Because can you imagine getting into that machine oh, without yeah. that window? Though I do make a point, if I suspect anybody is claustrophobic at all, to say to them there's a button that they can press, which will release the magnets if they're feeling uncomfortable. I tell that to everybody. Oh, okay. But I make a point of letting them understand that there's nothing mechanical that locks them in there so that nothing can get stuck. Mm-hmm. And the worst case scenario, if the button doesn't work, the, the machine can be unplugged and the magnets would lose their yes. power and the yeah, door would open. Just open it. So there's yeah. just no way you could get stuck in there mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So no it's again it wasn't uh... <laughs> well no no but it's, it's yeah. a good point and i think some people mention when they get in it or once they're finished their test it's there's a little bit of pressure change and that's the air exchanging between the yeah, test chamber yeah. and the bladder um so it's it's i guess you could compare it to going between a first floor and a second floor in an elevator oh, okay yeah that sounds about right but yeah. other than that it's pretty easy it is very easy yeah <laughs> yeah well, part made by yourself, the person running it as well. Well, but. thank you very much. <laughs> I really like what I do. I, I, I love it. I, I love the fact these people want to get to know themselves even better mm-hmm. and that they want to change their lives. And my biggest lifestyle change was done when I was 50. Um, Which is fantastic because, I mean, you kind of might get the tone that as a person ages, they just kind of lose that desire to change uh, in such a drastic way. And to, to hear that is great. I mean, to have that inspiration. And there's a lot you can still do, I suppose, is what I'm, I'm trying to say. Hey, I'm still pursuing that, uh, I'm still pursuing that 140 pound uh, bench press, though my trainer just shakes his head. Yeah, yeah. And that uh, uh, 280 deadlift. And yeah. well, um, what's the pursuit? Right? Well, that, it took yeah. me a year to get my first pull up, a year. Oh, believe and me, I know about pull-ups, and they're they're very intimidating and difficult. But how exhilarating is yes, when all of a sudden of you're course. doing one, you're yeah. doing two, you're doing four. So, yeah, yeah never stop. Mm-hmm. And and there's 
there's just a feeling too of, of what I'm doing is working and it's good for me when you get into your bod pod or whatever you're doing to tell you what your body yeah, composition yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. But there's also the frustrating side when you go into and you go, why is my body fat going up? Yes. And you don't like it, but man, you know it's not wrong and you know you got to take a look at it and you know you got to change it yeah. so that you keep yourself healthy. Yeah. Clarity, right? Clarity is 100%. power. Yeah. A good way to actually end off the final question here is how can people learn more about the bod pod and body know? Okay. Um, Google, Google the Bod Pod Burlington. Um, you'll get to my website, which is Body Know Inc. Um, a rather boring <laughs> um, website, but mm-hmm. it's got all the information you need. Um, you can call me. Uh, I can give you my telephone right now. If yeah, it, yep. yeah, of course. Okay. So whatever you want, social media, okay. phone number, 905-320-3586. anything. Nine zero five three two zero three five eight six. Email uh, debbie.anderson at simpatico.ca. Mm-hmm. Um, Google. Google's the easiest one, though, because it's got my website and it's got all the information. I do have a Facebook page, um, and I'm getting better at social media, and I will get things better. It's definitely a process, yeah. And I'll be posting all the information on the Elevate Your Craft um, Facebook page Yeah, reach page out to Matt. Well. <laughs> yes, definitely, definitely. Um, but that's it. Unless you have anything else uh, that you want to add or, or share, I think it's a good time to... Probably to a lot add. of people are going, quit sharing, Debbie. Um, but no, uh, the Body Know is there because I want everybody to know what their benchmark is, to mm-hmm. understand what their body is, and to take better care of themselves. Yeah. So I will get up at 3 o'clock in the morning if I have to to get you guys yeah. to come in here. Um, so just call me and we'll work it out and you'll be pleased that you do it. But thank you for listening. Yeah, and from someone that's actually done the process and been in the bod pod, and it, the information is fantastic. It's something that I had never done before and it was fantastic. But you know what I'm missing out of all of this talking I've done? One of the key things that people use the most and is the biggest aha moment for them is because of the numbers that I can give you with your body fat and your Mm -hmm. lean, I will be able to tell you and show you and give it to you in hard copy. We'll ascertain what your base minimum caloric intake is necessary. And we will discuss the quality of those calories because that's really important. But you need to know, so many people do these 800 calories a day, which there's just, there's nobody that can, yeah. well, there's yeah. not very many people that their body just functions on 800 calories. So it will tell you what your base caloric intake is that's mm-hmm. necessary. Then it'll break it down into three, four levels of lifestyle intensity from being sedentary right to being extremely active. Mm-hmm. Um, and it'll give you your, it's rather accurate, range of calories that you need to consume to maintain to the numbers it, that yeah. we've just read. Then I will work with you and explain to you how you can work with those calorie ranges Mm -hmm. to reduce the body fat, um, but how you can work with those, with that caloric intake knowledge so that you don't lose the lean. Because if you go below that, that magic number of don't go below this number, if you go below it, um, then you're not feeding the engine. And Mm -hmm. if you don't feed the engine, it um, starts to break down. You got it. And that's something I should have mentioned too, because that's what was so big for me were those numbers. It's huge. And again, it's the accuracy. And there's formulas and there's ways to do it that you can find online or wherever. Yep. But again, it was that accuracy. And it really breaks it down very well. What well, is there um, in front of you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And well, thank you. I'm glad that you thought to add that. <laughs> yeah, I know. Here I was talking. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But no, that's so yeah. important. And, and usually piques people. Uh, they love that information. It is. No, it is And then great. there's the process of making sure that they understand quality of, yeah, of, of yeah. calories. Because calories are great, but if they're all done through... Twinkies. Uh, yeah, low quality foods. Yeah. It's not going to It's going to have, uh, you, might lose, you might lose where you want to for a while, but in the big picture, no. Sustainability. Anyway, yeah. 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 Uh, well, thanks, guys. That's it uh, for us today. Uh, be sure to follow the podcast uh, on Twitter at EYCKAS. Uh, the Facebook, YouTube, and iTunes handles are Elevate Your Craft, all one word. And the website is www.elevateyourcraft.net. Thanks, and see you next time.